Hey chess friends, today, I'm going to show you a marvelous and stupendous chess game played between Alpha Zero and Stockfish, this game is astonishing as it involves a rook sacrifice on h7, so, let's dive into the game without wasting any time. This game isn't a recent match, but it is a classic battle between Alpha Zero and Stockfish. I started the game with e4, and we have c5, instead of the usual d4 and knight f3, I decided to go with b4, initiating the wing gambit, after knight f3 happened on the board, black could play a5, but I would respond with a3 to attack the pawn, which works in my favor, we have e6, d4, and the pawn is well protected, but after a couple of moves, we have a3 to attack the pawn again, alpha 0 ignored that pawn and played another move, d6, I didn't capture the pawn because it was well protected by the knight. So I played c3, attacking the pawn, and now alpha 0 captured it. This is called the wing gambit that I initiated. After a couple of moves, we have knight c4 followed by knight e3, developing the two knights to do some counterplay on the king side, I played knight d2 to consider f4, and after a5, f4 happened on the board to involve the rook and queen, eventually, I can consider g4, g5, and after the exchanges on the a6 square for the bishops, we have queen to e2, attacking the rook, that's my strategy. After a few moves, we have d5, the knight moves back to d8, and I played a very cunning move, alpha 0 style, g4, this is a Lamborghini move because my pieces are stuck and passive, so I can respond with g5. After a couple more moves, the king moves to h1, and the queen needs to go to g2 or h5 as desired. You have to involve your rook as well, a few moves later, we have a4 and c4 on the board. Playing b4 is a bad choice because the queen can come there, and your rook on a1 is unguarded, which is why alpha 0 just captured the pawn. Do you get it? After the bishop moves to c3 and my rook comes to f3, preparing to go to h3, queen to h5 will create an attack on the pawn. We have a3 a2, and after a few more moves, we have the knight moving to c2 and the rook back to a8, despite alpha 0 having a very good passed pawn, I moved my rook to g1 to counterplay on the g-file along with the bishop and rook, attacking the pawn, we have e5, and suddenly, I sacrificed my rook on h7, this is a cunning sacrifice that you can employ in your game because after you capture the rook, I can go with g6, prompting you to capture, if you don't capture it. Then I can play queen to h3 check followed by queen to h7 check, leading to checkmate with queen to h8, the game will be completely over. Going back to the position, when you capture the rook and g6 happens on the board, if you dare to consider king g8, I can capture the pawn on f7, and then queen takes g7 will lead to checkmate, the game will be completely over for you. In this position, noticing that the rook sacrifice is poisonous, like if you capture the rook, your body will be poisoned, the knight comes to f8 like a squirrel fighting a snake, as the knight comes to g6 to attack the pawn on f4 for a family fork, we have rook to f1 to protect that pawn, now, my queen can zigzag to g4 and h5, alpha 0 here played a very surprising move, he promoted his bishop. What a dumb move, alpha 0. Are you serious? Why did you play that move, this is a very bad choice. After the capture and rook coming to a3, we have some exchanges on e5, and the knight comes to c2, you can see that queen g4 is coming with the idea of playing queen h5, and you cannot safeguard your rook, let me show you why, the queen can invade via g4 and attack h5, the knight can also come to e3 followed by knight to f5, in this position, some may consider playing bishop to d6 to create some breathing room for the king, but my queen can easily come to h5, prompting you to move. Then queen takes g6 will arrive with the idea that your pawn on f7 is pinned, the game will be completely over for you. So, let me provide you an amazing quote for you. Never argue with stupid people, they will drag you down to their level and then beat you with experience. Going back to the position, we discovered that you cannot safeguard your rook, which is why we have knight to f4 attacking the pieces, 
I sacrificed my rook on f4 and captured your rook on a3. In this position, I am attacking the pawn, consequently, bishop takes g7 comes, attacking the queen, the queen moves back, and after a few more moves, you can see that I am progressing and advancing my pieces, my pawn reaches the d7 square, opening the diagonal for the queen, after a few moves, we have rook to d3 followed by queen f5, and queen exchanges occurred, you can see that the knight comes to c5, and my knight goes to e6. If you capture the rook, I can capture your rook back, and pawn promotion will be unstoppable, alpha 0 captured the pawn, and after a few more moves, we have more exchanges, I am materially up and completely winning the game, pushing the pawns, and checkmating you on the b7 square, that was a very brilliant and astonishing game, I hope you enjoyed it very much, if so, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel, wishing you all the best. Bye bye.